California, home of beautiful beaches, the Golden Gate Bridge, and free-thinking scientists. Imagine a future with armies of medical robots the size of molecules. For the first time, we'll have medical tools that are molecular in their size, in their precision. I think that the possibilities are limitless. We will be able to heal and cure in ways that we could never do before. You would have a team of heart surgeons in a pill that you swallow. Instead of cutting somebody open for open heart surgery, the little molecular robotic surgeons will go about fixing your heart and then come out of your system naturally. You'll be healthy when you're 100 years old. You'll be healthy when you're 150 years old. Molecular robots swimming through our bodies, making us superhuman? Science fiction, surely. Well, yes, but only for the moment, say these scientists. Indeed, we already have nanorobots in our bodies, natural ones. To see them, we visited scientific animator Drew Berry. I started off as a cell biologist and animation really took over my role when I realised the demand for visualising what's happening at the nano scale. These scientifically accurate animations give a stunning view of what's occurring right now inside our body cells. These tracks here are part of the cell's internal scaffolding. And these little molecules that are running along these tracks are different sorts of courier molecules. They're carrying packages on their backs and they, they literally walk along these tracks. So kinesin running one way, and they can only run one direction along these tracks. And dynein, which are the green guys, they run the other way. Gee, they look remarkably like little robots getting around. Well, this is what our bodies look like at the molecular scale. We are largely all sorts of different molecular machines that work together to create a living thing. I think that, that biology and nature gives us a model for what we can build. So when we look at things that nature has built, we know that it can be done. We just don't know how yet. Could we hack Mother Nature's work and create our own artificial molecular machines? Well, Ralph Merkel certainly thinks we will. He imagines artificial red blood cells. These are like ordinary red blood cells, but they can carry over a hundred times as much oxygen. With them circulating in your blood, miraculous feats would be possible. They could let you hold your breath for over an hour. And, with the extra oxygen, you wouldn't drop dead straight after a heart attack. Your first response would be, oh my, my heart has stopped. And you'd probably get on your cell phone and call your doctor and say, Doc, my heart stopped, what should I do? Ralph and other researchers have even started designing the tiny parts for molecular machines. They've run them through a chemistry simulator to prove they're physically possible. And, if it's possible, it'll eventually be built, goes the old adage. This is a tiny molecular pump. And this, a kind of gear, a planetary gear. Those little coloured spheres are individual atoms. Now, if we could build this planetary gear, it ought to work, because what you're looking at are the results of molecular modelling. We can't build these yet. But in Los Angeles, molecular robots have taken a baby step forward. Scientists have used a technology that allows a strand of DNA to be bent into complex shapes, origami style. We would take that very long strand of DNA and fold it using a very large number of small strands of DNA to create uh, the shape that we wanted to make. They can bend DNA into any shape they like. Even smiley faces. Nadine Dabby used the same technology to create a tiny DNA robot. It's like a lawnmower. Walking along another strand of DNA, chopping off bits of DNA grass as it goes. When you put it on a surface of the thing that it likes to chop up, it rolls around looking for more stuff to cut up. Placing the grass strands precisely where you want them is the key. 
we can position these in a predetermined order, and that way we can control the robot and tell the robot whether we want it to go straight or turn left or turn right. Under a powerful atomic force microscope, you can just make out these minuscule grass cutters. The robot is the white dot, and that's the track it's walking on. Between each frame, you can see it's moving. Of course, we've got a long way to go to compete with nature's handiwork. But Ralph Merkel thinks the road to his nanomachines will actually come from a very different direction, from scanning, tunnelling microscopes. These devices allow us to move individual atoms and place them just where we want them. Check this out. This is a wafer of silicon, standard thing used in the microelectronics industry. Now naturally, it comes coated in a layer of oxygen atoms. So they cut off a small piece, put it in this device, boil off the oxygen, and then pass a gas of atomic hydrogen over it, and that forms a beautiful smooth layer of hydrogen atoms on the silicon. You can see it through the microscope. Those bumps are single hydrogen atoms. So we're going to attempt to knock off an individual atom off a surface. The microscope's extraordinarily fine tip moves over the surface, one by one, knocking off hydrogen atoms. So there you go. You can see that the line of atoms is actually oh, appearing. Oh, there it is. And it will actually follow this line. Yeah. <laughs> So this is really a row of atoms that I created, or let's say a row of hydrogen atoms that I took off uh, to make the silicon underneath visible. By manually shifting atoms, Sadhu can write anything he likes, even the smallest ABC logo ever made. A line just one atom wide. Now, the researchers here are working in two dimensions moving atoms just on the surface of the silicon. They're not developing nanomachines, rather new computer technologies. But being able to place atoms precisely in three dimensions is what's needed to build Ralph's nanomachines. And he predicts that will eventually happen. I'm expecting any year now that someone is going to cover, capture the cover of science or nature when they build a three-dimensional structure using this kind of technology. And then, we're off to the races. We'll just have to wait to see what sci-fi wonders the future will bring us.